Welcome to the Waiting List Podcast. Tell us the story. It's like many things you start building from, from scratch. And then which, I'm like, wait, I really do like watches because... You, you've seen so many watches. That makes you excited. Yeah, I think I really, really do like watches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a great way to see if you are a watch enthusiast. Right, welcome to another episode of the Waiting List Podcast, where I, Daniel, I'm joined by the whole crew today for a special Chinese New Year episode. Uh, for those who might be listening for the first time, the crew is the Chinese James Bond, Jacqueline, and Lung Lung. So I think as it's Chinese New Year, we should actually go round and the table and, well, the kind of theoretical table, non-existent table, uh, with our own Chinese New Year greetings. Mm-hmm. So oh. I'm going to go first. So I'm going to say like, Gongxi Fa Cai, or like, I should say it in like Cantonese actually, because everybody else speaks Mandarin here. Gong Fa Cai, Zhuk Dai Ga, San Tai Gin Hong, San Yi Hing Long, Man Si Yu Yi. Right, Alex, That's you're so next. unfair. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do a translation of Daniel, <laughs> except for the last one. I said He said, um, you know, Gong Fa Cai, there's no other uh-huh. translation than wish you um, more prosperous and health and wealth. And the last one, I actually don't know what the last one means. I uh, think it's uh, your business doing like better, right? Eh? All right. Okay, sure. No, no. I so said, uh, Yeah, that's one. Oh. Yeah, that one. That That's like literally like every, okay, million things go smoothly, right? Yeah. But, but no, like, no, no, but man is actually, smoothly. man in Chinese means 10,000. Exactly. Uh, so it's not a million. One, it's your bad man. Yeah. It's like, that's only one million. So it's actually oh, only 10,000 things go one, well. Ten, yeah, 10,000. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, 10,000 yeah. things go well. So yeah, because then, like in Chinese that, culture, ten thousand is not enough. So the yeah, more the better. Exactly. So Lung got it right, <laughs> like millions. <laughs> <laughs> so is that your greeting, Alex? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Right next, Jacqueline. Oh, oh my God. <clears throat> okay, like I say, in, well, I guess I'll like add on to what you said. I'll just say, um, 祝大家在新年里心想事成. You didn't say that, right? Yeah, I didn't say That's that. That's a nice okay. one. <laughs> Good. Is it my turn? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so yes. I always say "nian nian you yu," right? Oh, okay, yeah. And "cai yuan guan guan," because oh, I feel like that's one. such a that's such a app thing. Like, I always feel like if you have money, you can make more money. So it's like money on top rolls of money over. rolling like yeah. money rolls yeah, over rolling and com- yeah. compounding basically yeah right, that's a good one yeah well, well, actually, one. you guys could have picked like a uh, hot yip chun bowl that's for what education is isn't it yeah that's for your kids to uh, be well yeah. educated oh okay i'll yeah. say that to you daniel because you're the only one with kids well I think actually jack, it's jack. more more associated for jack actually <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> yeah a little bit <laughs> yeah well we're all students still so yeah Right, so yeah. I think, you know, um, it's kind of nostalgic a little bit because, you know, this time last year, and it, it actually doesn't feel like a year ago at all. You know, mm-hmm. I was in Hong Kong celebrating Chinese New Year with my family and then COVID hit the world and like, well, you know, the rest is kind of like history. So that's the bad side. But concurrently, you know, it was the birth of like these three relationships, you know, which is mm-hmm. like fucking awesome. So, and also the... The birth of the podcast so mm-hmm. i guess it's kind of quite fitting you know because chinese new year is about being with family and and you know i do in in some ways think doing this episode like you, you know you guys are my family obviously we've got like Aww. skyfall james bond he, he could probably be like the bodyguard of the family you know so. <laughs> wait, wait, we're missing chester here no no there's one person you're missing out and that's chester yeah chester too yeah yeah what yeah. would chester be he would be, he would be uh, the bodyguard. odd a job. Chef. He would be odd job. Yeah, <laughs> chef, obviously. <laughs> oh, yeah, the chef. Okay, um, but today is actually a special day in the calendar because do you know why, Alex? No. Uh, why was it sixth? Was it because today Seven. is Jacqueline's birthday? Oh, what? oh, happy birthday. Hey, happy <laughs> birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you, guys. You. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I thought you, you, you want. Guys, look there. It's, it's, yeah. it's February 7th. 
so people can still message him <laughs> and spam her when this comes out. <laughs> let's yeah. get this one out Wait, ASAP please don't. then. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's get this out I, I today. Find... No, no, it's actually the seventh yes. Um, but then it's actually so this is like one of the birthdays I celebrate, and then the second birthday I celebrate is whichever day Danian Chui is. So then. Okay. Technically, like I have two birthdays, but then my family only greedy. celebrates the, like the lunar New Year mm. date. I don't know no the Li. calendar. Yeah, the Yang Li. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yeah so like, Guo Li is like the normal one, like not the normal one, like the national, like one the date like Guo Li, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then Nong Li is like the Chinese calendar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we like always to be a bit like extra I get two birthdays. Chinese. Yeah, I get mm. two birthdays. One I celebrate usually with family, and then mm-hmm. one I celebrate with like Western friends. That's actually on the seventh, so mm-hmm. um, it's a little bit sad because I can't really do either one this year. Um, but it's okay. I think I've reached to a point where it's like birthdays are just pointless because you're getting so old, and then like old people don't. So really, we celebrate birthdays. Well, I, I would tend to disagree. <laughs> nah, you're wrong. Because, <laughs> yeah, I would tend to disagree yeah. because, like in Zhongguo Wenhua, like in Chinese culture, yeah, if it's your birthday, near Chinkerdia, you have to like yeah. treat us. Wait, so really? you owe me, man. You fucking owe mm-hmm. me. Like <laughs> I, I'm fucking recording this shit. Like you know, at least, like if you got two birthdays, you owe me two now. Yeah, <laughs> I've I've picked out the restaurants already in Japan. Okay, okay, we'll pop one. We'll pop one when yeah. I go. Back. I picked out the restaurants in Shanghai, and Alex has picked out uh, the two restaurants in Hong Kong. In, in Hong Kong, so that's six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jacqueline, in advance. Thank you. Oh man. All right, but anyway, it's been a while, Alex. Like, yeah. you know, I gave you license to go and find the man with the golden gun. You know, and you you know you you try and shoot him down, and you've done no shooting him down at all. In turns, you know, got a fascination with fucking mirrors and stripping, you know. But <laughs> but like seriously, like what have you been up to? Um. Well, to the first part, no, I I haven't had been given permission with a golden gun, Daniel. <laughs> Don't know what the shit you're talking about. Um. No, I've just been doing my own projects. I've got a couple of businesses which I'm doing actively, and that's just been taking like all my time. And since I'm dealing with like the US time, Middle East time, Europe time, I'm kind of like not even sleeping. So it's just all over the place. Mm-hmm. But you weren't yeah. sleeping last time before this. You I was well, sleeping. Y- yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fine now. I'm fine. Thank you for caring. So yeah, I've just gonna, been working on my own projects. Are you going to catch up uh, some, some rest over Chinese New Year? I mean, how many holidays do you have? Uh, it's the normal, isn't it? What is it just Friday? Well, there's no holidays when you're doing your own work. You work seven days a week. So I would want to take a break. Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. God, I haven't missed you at all, man. <laughs> <laughs> How is your um, book competition coming along, you guys? The reading competition. Well, I was going to mention that like later, mm-hmm. but since we've since you have mentioned it, I might as well do it mm-hmm. now. So like, it, like people don't know, and you might have been following my Instagram. You've probably seen that from the beginning of the year uh you know i've been probably reading a few books and i've been numbering them and it's because me and alex came to an agreement of i would try and hit 52 books this year and he would try and hit was it a 31 or 32 alex 32 32 32 books so um i'm on uh book 10 um i've been ill for the last two weeks so that's really put me back a bit i'm still like way ahead of the schedule i'm I'm, i'm gonna smash it i'm gonna try and get to 100 or something but um yeah i've i've got to say alex like that fucking sapiens book man what's wrong with you (laughs) that book is like a pile of twad like it's like it's like no it's like this book called sapiens sapiens right it's about it's about sapiens about mankind. Wait, you didn't like that book? No, I didn't like it at all. I love that. You, I love book. that. I have right, okay. Paperback no, and that, audio. Oh my god. That is fine. Long, long, what's your thoughts? Long, long. No, what no, is your no, thoughts? She hasn't I, read it. I, I haven't read it, and I don't right. intend to because I've watched like every single YouTube video I can find on this guy, and even as he's describing it, I'm just like, this is just not my thing. 
I got to I just want to say no 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 I want to yeah. cut back for a moment because you know Bill Gates he's done a podcast and one of yeah. the uh-huh. guests was actually Yuval Noah Harari and that was yeah. actually one yeah. of the most interesting ones of how they dissect uh companies so after this podcast doing a plug in yeah. yeah, check out um Bill Gates podcast on Spotify and well, actually, okay. the guy was on um, Till Bill, T- Tom Billio. T- Tom Billio. That's yeah. the one I watched as well. So I kind of yeah. watched it. And like, to be yeah. honest, after the first 10 minutes, I was like, mm, OK. And then Alex was like, no, nah, you got to read it. But it's a, I think it's fair to have a different opinion on a, on a, on a book, yeah, right? Yeah. But mm-hmm. I'd like to hear why you thought it was good. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. like, I really struggled to find anything good in that book. Well, I, I, the thing I liked most about it was kind of it takes you from the beginning all the way to now. And you just have that understanding of it layering to where, you know, humanity is going to. And he kind of um, asks questions which gets dissected in ways that you don't normally think about. So, for example, uh, corporations are a story. You know, things that we tell ourselves are all kind of lies, right? So mm-hmm. in that aspect, putting yourself out of position and just really thinking about it. Um, whether it is corporations or luxury goods or whatever, mm. it makes you think differently. So it's kind of stories that we get, we're given and stories that we believe. And he gave the example of, imagine, you know, you're going to Microsoft and then you have like a monkey go inside it or a, an animal. They don't know what Microsoft is. They don't know it's a, you know, one of the richest companies in the world, but, you know, they seem to be doing something which is deemed real to us. And that's only real to human beings. So the next phase is actually uh, is his other book, which he actually goes into the next phase of talking about technology mm-hmm. and the influences of how it impacts our society. So it's a, it's a beginning part for a next part that you have to read as well. But I guess you're not going to read second part. I'm, I'm not going to read the second one, mate. <laughs> like, like, because I get what you mean when I was reading it. But to get that point, you didn't have to read the whole book. Right. And I think there's a bit whole load of load, like, he covers so many things in a book that you cannot go into real any kind of depth in any of it. Uh, and the only thing, maybe his point is that, is that whatever we believe now is literally whatever, whatever we choose to believe. And we try and justify it through social models, like which are trending at that time. And we think we're developing, but you know, are we really, or is it just just going round in, in in a circle that that suits mankind? Because I think he put a valid argument, which I've always thought anyway. And maybe part of the reason why I found that book not that interesting is because I kind of thought about all of this stuff anyway. But um, how right now we promote equality in society, and yet at the same time we celebrate how individual we are like it, it's, it's actually like very contradictory you know and you've got like two schools of thought which you know try and uh you know try and coexist at the same time seem both right but then you know they kind of limit each other at the same time so it was that, that was like you know some like a, a theme in the book um but and the bit about the future dude like you can predict anything in the future. Like I could pull anything out my ass. You know what I mean? Like it, 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 cyborgs like aren't that hard to think. Oh yeah, you know I read. Oh, he said he mentioned the word cyborgs. Like anybody who's like seen Terminator would have known that. <laughs> you know, like and uh, uh, like anybody. And he's like um, DNA engineering. You know, engineering mm-hmm. into superhumans. Well, anybody who's seen Gattaca, the movie which is about that whole thing and how it disrupts, you know, you're going to have this like, second prejudicial system on, on your genes. You know, that whole movie covers that. I mean, I've, I've seen it. So, but that was like, yeah, okay. Not really bringing anything new to me anyway. So that's why mm. I thought I was reading it. I was just getting through the words, you know, that feeling. <laughs> so, I, I think so. um, even when you, so like, I've only seen his YouTubes, right? I think even when you listen to him talk, he's, extremely intelligent and smart right but that's not enough to like write a book you have to be able to translate your ideas into words right in a way that's easy to digest so the the general population can understand what you're saying right yeah yeah i mean the book is actually not written in a high level so most people can Mm, read it mm. but Mm -hmm. like i know exactly what you mean he comes across as a high high functioning logical kind of guy right but Mm. then if you are one of those kind of people how can you base so much of your 
facts or your opinion on such limited data, which like, yeah. like back in the yeah. day, there isn't that much data. Mm. It, it's really like, you think, well, if you're so, but the way it's written, it almost comes across a bit like gospel. Like mm, this mm. is it. Yeah. Mm. Um, and that's what I think for a lot of readers who, you know, maybe, maybe don't read a lot of books or don't have that experience of reading other books they don't filter that out because you have to ask questions right i think we all do yeah. when we read books you ask the questions and you think you know is this what this guy's writing you know uh, valid and i do think yeah on alex's side it's great to for the book to open debates i mean we're, we're debating about it now yep mm -hmm. but um yeah nah <laughs> sorry man and, and jacqueline what's your perspective okay i read it i think it first came out in 2016 if i'm correct yep. Um, might have been late 2015 so a long time ago and I read it um, on paperback and I also had an audiobook I really liked it <laughs> like from what I can remember um, I agree with what Alex said it goes from the beginning of time to what is happening right now and then obviously you have to read the follow-up which is um, you know lessons for the 21st century and then he makes Hermodeus. you know yeah, yeah um you know, references back with between these two books and um i really enjoyed his historical point of view because um i like when he raises case studies from businesses from the from you know early 19th century early uh, 20th century um i remember he, one of the first inter um, examples he raised was remind me is a car company based in the uk it's the lion um, Persia. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was about yeah. Persia, not Boxer. Yeah, that's what you're thinking. Yeah. yeah, and I remember that example really clearly because it really resonated with me. Going back to what Alex said, is why is it one of the most successful companies right now? Is because it sells like the story, it sells a belief, and then if you look at successful companies right now, um, you know, you look at Tesla you look at um, Apple, you know, what they're selling is they're selling, yes, efficiency, but then with Tesla, it's like also this, you can't mention Tesla without mentioning Elon Musk, right? And then the image of Elon is like, oh yeah, he grew up in a single parent household. And then he's always had this um, dream about outer space, or he's always had this dream that, you know, people might not um, think it might be achievable one day and then he just comes out with like stupid but like with the cyber truck and the you know he comes out really like the with the boring company stuff like it's funny but it's kind of plays in with the brand image of tesla boring company or like spacex and whatever so but to someone who isn't familiar with his ethos or his um business regimen and whatever you look at this guy and the companies that he's built and you can't dissect that without mentioning that it's like a story of dreams and success and yes, money and technology. It's like you either like the brand and, and then you have to believe in it. And then, so that's what he kind of talks about with the, like the car company. Um, but that's just like one example I remember from the top of my head. Yeah. I'm sure he brought up many other examples. Well, this is an example um, of an example that I said. Like, okay, so he talks about money, right? The, um, the, the invention of money and this kind of stuff. And it's interesting because like I read a book on that, which is like the, the 5,000 years of debt, right? Um, I can't remember the author. He's, he's dead now. But um, so... So this, uh, the author of Sapiens, this Harari dude, yeah, he, mm. he mentions like Adam Smith's like economic theories and the theory of barter, like how money might have evolved through barter. Mm. But actually, you know, if you look at the actual History kind of, of evidence in the, in the, yeah, what e economists really think now, they actually don't know how money actually came, right? So... Um, just because you like mention a big guy called Adam Smith, you know, who wrote a book many, many years ago, mm. and then like base your then conclusions on that, like money is such a deep topic in itself. And you can't just fleetingly do a bit of research. And maybe he's done more, you know, I don't know. 
but it did look like it's just very fleetingly do a bit of research and then base, oh do you know what i'm going to base my assumptions on that like it just seemed very very on that particular case i really felt like that because mm. all i did was read a book like five thousand years of debt and it that book goes to question way deeper than but, this guy but, ever touched well, well maybe the whole point of sapiens is not to go through everything is to tell you in segments and compartmentalize parts for you to go back and do research so when you're doing talk about mm. money i actually mm. brought the book called um the silk rose by peter franco pan and he was talking about resources and how that kind of um determines who has the power because at the end of the day whoever controls the resources and the goods of that time that's needed then they have the most dominant power so if you look at now if you look at chips and everything whoever dominates the cobalt and the things for the battery would end up being the most uh, economically powerful comp- uh, uh, country. So mm. I think what the whole point of Sapiens is, is not to go through everything. Otherwise it would be a billion page book. I think mm. it's just to, you know, pull it into segments so that you can go and do your own research. Yeah, maybe. Um, man, you, that little bit where you just took the book out. Oh, that was so book review <laughs> yeah, sorry. yeah. Like, it's, sorry. It's, it's, it's a beast of a book that's what i'm saying anyway so anyway alex where are you because i've done like 10 where are you i am on my fifth book so, so you're, ahead. Wow. you're ahead i'm okay yeah i'm okay well um the books i've read were quite short um so mm-hmm. i've been quite lucky so but this say this i uh, know this uh the silk rose one is pretty hefty so it's gonna take me a while well i want to you also take this opportunity to thank like all the people that have been giving me their recommendations and because and they, they've been really thoughtful and really they've gone in depth because people have sent me a list and they say oh these are great you know um and I, you know i'm gonna go and i said to them i'm gonna go and research these to see if they're actually suitable for me um but to take the time out to, to do that you know it's really like kind of touching i've got a whole you know, i've got so many messages i haven't even like gone through to check the mm. books so i'm really looking forward to that i'm still trying to find my way into the i was just te- you know i was telling long long i'm trying to find my way like with the genre i like um that i think really best suits me so i'm still yeah trying to find my way so i'm i'm reading i've read like these you know like the last lecture and netflix they're all kind of like and the leading by alex ferguson they're kind of like biographical or biographies and I want to get away from that because I've noticed that successful traits in people kind of overlap. And it's just the, the story, the ex- their experience or that the way they got the lessons was slightly, maybe slightly different. Um, and I want to go into something more. Yeah, I want to try actually some novels. Um, mm. There's this book that everybody's been, as a few people have mentioned, is called Pachinko. So oh. I want to see that read that book maybe i want to read a little bit because i really quite enjoyed okay i'll give you some credit here i loved out of the gobi like Mm. out of the gobi was Mm. is a heavy book it's emotionally kind of a bit heavy too um but his the way he goes that made me learn a lot more about chinese culture have a better understanding of chinese culture and subsequently why chinese culture is the way it is now um and so I thought that was really, really good. Um, but I also want to look at some uh, more philosophical stuff, like uh, maybe Confucius, something like this, something to like make me think a little bit more. So yeah, those are the kind of things I, I'm, I'm mm. doing. Yeah. How about everybody else? Good. I, I feel like you should start a book club. Who was a bookworm? Uh, yeah, mm. but um, I was telling Dan, <laughs> like honestly, if you can start a book club, although I don't know how it's going to function like with COVID and everything, It'll be amazing because I think a lot of people like, um, I mean, like at the end of the day, everyone's, um, everyone's a bit lonely, right? Because everyone's in different countries and like, you're all doing your own thing. And then there's a lot of people who just can't wait for that weekly kind of like get together where you can discuss things. And I think with a lot of, um, I hate to generalize and say housewives because that's the only book club, I, like Oprah's book club kind of thing. You can just see like how excited everyone is to discuss stuff. Um, but yeah, I feel mm. like in a year or two years, I will be having the same conversation with you guys and I'll be like, see, I told you to start a book club. <laughs> oh, why don't you start it? <laughs> why does it have to be? I have to start it. Because I don't feel like I can read as fast as you guys. And I realized the genre that I read, it's always really dark and heavy, like the ones I'm drawn to. Mm. 
So I like nonfiction stuff that's mm. like about the Middle East or about mm. very like painful subjects in the U.S. and stuff. And I don't think a lot of people want to read that before they sleep. Well, I think yeah. it's I think it's great to hear. I think a lot of people read books because they want to get stimulated in some way. So yeah. it's great to hear, you know, like maybe that's your genre, genre, but mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I don't read it, but it would still be great to hear you talk about it, like, mm-hmm. and then increase uh, one's knowledge. I mean, mm-hmm. I, after reading quite a few of Alex's recommendations, I kind of got a feel <laughs> for his kind, kind of taste. Alex? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Well, and, not uh, really, because there's a few books that I, uh, that I haven't shared to you, but I all, no, 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 no. I don't I need the James the Bond books, to read. Alex. Like, like I, you know, <laughs> I, you've been banging about, you're messaging me about Doctor No. We've got to read the original one, you know. I haven't read any uh, of them actually. And like, you know, I just not going to put any time into reading. I feel, I feel actually James really. I, I feel bad because actually really should be reading some Ian Fleming books. Um, yeah, you feel bad. I feel like you I haven't done it justice. Bad. That is your <laughs> profile. I should you feel need... bad, you know? Yeah, you should. You should. But no, no should. one I have been getting quite into is actually Oscar Wilde going back again. Like I've read it really when I was quite young, but I'm going back into it again to read through it. Mm. So I think he's quite a good writer. Mm. I have to say. Him. Very smart. Reading fast, yes, you've got to be careful because... Um, you need sometimes to digest a book after you read the book to really give it some thought. Not only are you thinking about it when you're reading it, but then afterwards, your, your impression of the book three days later, five days later will be different after you've really digested it. It's really easy to, you know, for me to go on Instagram and just make some half assed comments about that's what you've been doing you haven't actually okay. read the book so. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. just keep yeah. reading it's just like oh yeah. that was well, you know, yeah yeah i'm not andy jack yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh so anyway i'll see i'll see you later on in the year i mean let's have some feedback from the listeners as well there are quite yeah. a, i'm quite surprised how many people are into it so if, if it's something you guys want to do um you know create some book club you know just have the wish to do it and mm-hmm. reach out to me or everybody anybody on this podcast and i'll give it some real thought on how to do it, except you know i am fucking busy so. mm-hmm. <laughs> right um right so anyway back to chinese new year what yeah. is what does traditionally everybody do here for that and what is everybody doing this year for it so so for me i'm um I usually spend it. I, I normally fly to Hong Kong, yeah, because my dad's there, and uh, yeah, just end up eating uh, a shit ton of food, and then I have a lot of relatives in in Hong Kong, and I end up eating probably about three to four days of food. Where I mean, even on the first day when my mum brings the food out, just looking at it is enough to make me full. You know, like it's just so mm. much food. What is some of the stuff that you guys eat? A lot of my well, we eat a lot of seafood, so mm, okay, yeah, loads of seafood, and actually not that much uh, meat. Um, mm. But my mum really likes uh, pantai. Mm. Yeah, so Chai, right? it's quite, it's, it's the, quite, it's quite yeah. Cantonese thing. So okay, um, we have that, um, and then you know, mum's really big on like new clothes. Mm. So yeah, we get a lot of new clothes. It isn't the only time I get a lot clothes, red as well. Yep, mm. you have to buy. You have to wear red, new shoes. Yeah, I'm, new I'm into that. Like yeah, wearing the right new colors clothes. and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's really it for me. And it, like you've got to understand as well, because I don't know if Alex is going to resonate with this. When I was in the UK, um, there's no holiday like no holiday fixed in for Chinese New Year in the calendar. So everybody's working and <clears throat> there's not that many Chinese. And so it was really kind of a bit weird. Then my mom was telling me, yeah, we're doing this really big thing called Chinese New Year. If she would like really decorate the house, put the flowers in, you know, clean up everything like that. Mm. And it's kind of still like alien. It was really hard for me to attach to it because Nobody else at school was doing it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's only when I come to Shanghai. But even in Shanghai is a bit, I mean, the fireworks. The first year I came, 
the mm-hmm. fireworks, man. Like they go on like from <laughs> from like nine p.m. <laughs> like seven eight p.m. to like three a.m. Like all year, and you just stand outside the window watching. They are really beautiful because mm-hmm. you know China has no concept of you know danger for for fireworks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so like, and everybody's putting them out, and it is like you get that atmosphere. Um, mm-hmm. But actually, also a lot of Chinese use that um, use this period to to go traveling, um, mm-hmm. and so Shanghai becomes super empty and super nice um, mm-hmm. with blue skies and everything. But this year with uh, COVID, uh, the Chinese government's are uh, like really kind of quite strict, so mm-hmm. you don't mm-hmm. want to get into that situation. Especially, I think to some extent, like yeah, me, Jacqueline, and Lung here, where you can't get back home. <laughs> right mm. so i don't yeah. want to be stuck outside and and uh not be able to get back when i need to get back so nobody's taking the risk of leaving shanghai this year mm. so how about you alex um yeah i just the, the best part of chinese new year was getting that red packet wasn't it so <laughs> like what's this for <laughs> you know it's the first time when i was uh when i could remember my earliest memory um but yeah we used to go to like lesser square chinatown you know go yeah. eat um so that was like the typical thing back in the uk um, in Hong Kong, you know, I thought it would be quite a big thing. And it, in some sense, it is, but it's, it doesn't seem to be that big. So mm-hmm. I would actually like to go to like Shanghai and really experience what it's like. Maybe not the fireworks because, you know, I want to sleep at 3 a.m. But um, uh, no, it's something that I want to experience probably. Yeah, the, the proper mm-hmm. way. You, you came to Shanghai in the last movie. It was shot in Shanghai. <laughs> you know, with the blue, <laughs> blue lights under the thing, you know, shot in Shanghai. You, you, <laughs> killed, somebody, you killed somebody in the... In the building. Oh, Alex is you know, so <laughs> done. <laughs> it took me a while to get, yeah, sorry, you're talking about um, Skyfall, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It took you a while to <laughs> realize yeah, so, yeah, what he was, was talking about. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I was like, yeah, I was like, when did, I, I last time I went to Shanghai was your watch festival thing. I was trying to work out what, what are you talking <laughs> yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, that, that, was, uh, that was the uh, alias for a secret mission. Yeah. Because <laughs> you disappeared after Sunny like the was. first day. <laughs> Sunny was. Yeah, with a dodgy man called ocean which i'm sure is also an alias <laughs> right how about you guys i'm sure long long is a bit different the way you do it and i'm sure jacqueline is a bit yeah. different, right um like i always feel like taiwanese people take everything that is mild, like anything that gives them a reason to be like superstitious or do something over the top <laughs> to do it so like even with these festivals like these gods birthdays they have like I don't know if you guys have seen like when they dress up as gods, but they're walking on stilts and they oh, wear yeah. these and they're just walking and they're like two meters tall. Oh, and they're dressed uh, up like the gods and it's like a parade and you're like, oh, they do shit. it out on the streets, right? Yeah, on the streets. And it's so scary as a kid because some of the gods are like, um, they Not guard the gates of hell. Yeah. And it's really damn scary. And there's ones which are like the heads like a horse. And the body is like human, like Neil told Mamian. You know what I mean? Yeah. So one is mm-hmm. a one's a um a cow. That's from hell, a, right? Yeah. So they guard yeah. the gates. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so they're like Dan said, a lot of fireworks, and a lot of the makeshift like home ones. You, you know the ones which are mm-hmm. like you just light it up and you run away. So a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and we eat a lot of dumplings, so we don't eat a lot of seafood. And there's like a whole thing where you got to eat one side of a fish. So it's like nian nian yo yu. So you have fish every yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that, yeah. Yeah. And then um, you have specific um, vegetables you have to eat. Um, mm. Abalone and all this stuff. And then uh, dumplings, right? Because dumplings mm. kind of signify the Chinese like a uh, coin. Money. The, the yeah. Money, but when right? I was young, we used to have, um, so we'll take coins, like actually literally coins clean the coins or cook them or whatever and then put the coins in the dumplings and now looking mm-hmm. back that's really dumb and very <laughs> dangerous so like I wouldn't recommend it but all the grandkids would eat a lot and then we'll eat until like 11 p.m and we're still like eating and eating because we're trying to collect the coins mm-hmm. but yeah that's what we used to do mm-hmm. and same thing clothes um new clothes but for Chinese people, like the day, the year, like the countdown into New Year's, it isn't 12, it's 11. So it's like 11 p.m. is the new year. So around 10-ish, you kind of like change into your new clothes. Mm. 
and you have to go to like Ying Tai Sen, which is like welcome the the yeah. god of wealth, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. God, and and as a kid, because I'm not very superstitious, you're like, where is he? And you're like looking around. <laughs> show and like, where is he going? <laughs> yeah, well, and they'll be like that direction, and you're like, where? <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of, you know, a lot of it is like your parents telling you, yeah, like eating the one side of the fish. No, I'd be picking yeah. out the other side. No, no, you can't do that. I'm no. like, why not? Yeah, he's yeah. unlucky. I'm like, that's just dumb. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. That's just so dumb, right? But obviously, you can't say anything. Not because you're just yeah. gonna get a mouth. You're just gonna get an absolute earful. Yeah, I was, I was it's just easier not guys, to say anything. Are you guys actually quite superstitious? Mm, no, not at all. Um, I wouldn't say so. But I mean, I mean, you as a Chinese family, you're just gonna get some part of it right because mm-hmm. like my my parent well my dad isn't but my mum is and it's probably the same for a lot of mm-hmm. maybe it's a lot of the same for a lot of households the mum is yeah. like proper on it yeah sometimes I don't even think her facts are right you know like if you go online <laughs> you'll find a lot of this is like hang on that that contradicts that that contradicts that and you be thinking you can't bring it up and say, have a like a debate about it it's not it's not scientific this thing mm. yeah. yeah yeah how about um, you Jack yeah, what about you? Um, so meal wise, it's a lot similar to lungs. Mm. Um, because in Dongbei, you don't really eat a lot of seafood to start with. Mm. Don't eat a lot of things um, in Dongbei. It's just baijiu. <laughs> it's yeah. So um, what, no, wine, but like in wine, Chinese wine. New Year, a lot of carbs, right? A lot of carbs. Yeah, so, so a lot many. of dumplings, a lot of uh-huh. bing, a lot mm. of um, and then um, and then and oh. then um, a lot of poultry, um, red meat. And then mm-hmm. my grandma would make her specialty egg roll um, that she has, to, she only like makes maybe like three or two times a year because it's actually very labor intensive. Um, mm-hmm. So then we all go to her house and then we help out. Um, so again, like a lot of, uh, going out and buying a lot of stuff like so before mm-hmm. the Chinese New Year you actually have to like go and buy all this stuff so like a lot of fruit baskets a lot of mm-hmm. like you know like sausages and and um, uh, pig feet and stuff like that mm-hmm. and then uh, usually <laughs> people I listening sell- are people yeah. listening are like pig feet what the hell? yeah well i'm sure like chinese i mean yeah. people with asian Trotters. backgrounds are familiar yeah. but then i know that it's featured on like um james corden's show where it's like spill or um yeah or, like, like the fill. one we spin the t- yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 and then there's I like pig feet one. there's like pidan and i'm just like yeah. dude like come on <laughs> yummy <We> started eating <laughs> this when we were like two <laughs> Um, but anyway, so then like a lot of buying, yeah. a lot of consuming, and mm-hmm. then at um, and then we watch the 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 show like the Chun Jie Lian Huan Lan Hui, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and then so we watch that together, and then after we're watching that, like it's still going on, right? Like you have the first batch of dumplings ready for like the first meal, and then mm-hmm. the kitchen never stops. Like the kids mm-hmm. watch the show, and then the adults are still making dumplings and then when the show comes on you put the second batch in and then you eat that and then Mm -hmm. after a while people are like sleepy then you go outside because it's freaking cold and then Mm -hmm. you um so like a lot of fireworks and then you Mm -hmm. light up the thing and you spin it around and like spell things (laughs) in the air and then so that's like the chinese new year but then chinese new year goes on for like a week right so there are like meals planned every single day and then uh, at night um where i'm from you go to the ice festival um you like pet little baby arctic foxes and you ride in little horses and then you go home fireworks and you repeat Uh yeah so so is everybody kind of just staying at home this year yeah Yeah. (laughs) okay That, that was pretty but like probably, the easy version. No, but um, in, because Singapore is kind of like back to normal, right? Like COVID-wise, yeah. I would say. Um, mine is the gatherings are limited to eight. Um, I think there's a lot of gambling going on because this trip mm-hmm. back, literally everyone is just like mahjong all the way yeah. until the mahjong sets are being sold out and they're getting yeah. sold at a premium. 
I was just like, what? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just quiet. Like, what? Yeah, I'm shocked. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it means a lot of people a lot of time, though. Yeah, like Mahjong, yeah. you know, it, okay. it's one of those things that fits into so much Chinese culture. People get together. They, they have, like, food and they have, like, their tea on the side. They gamble. Mm -hmm. you know, they play the game. It yeah. just fits into so many things that Chinese people probably need right now, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. So, anyway, um, so with it being, like, Chinese New Year and all, I thought it would be fun to look at um this year's predictions right yeah and i actually looked at last year's predictions and i mm -hmm. thought we could see if they came true and then like, basically it was all load of sure. bollocks yeah because oh. it was all fucking wrong <laughs> like like you know <laughs> nobody predicted fucking covid so i'm like you know it, you chat shit yeah <laughs> so i was like that nah, because we're just going to go everything no that was wrong that was wrong that was wrong mm -hmm. like, no, mm -hmm. okay. actually read out last year that'd be quite interesting to see nah, i can't because, yeah. no no because because okay, so I, I oh, did come on, I at, no, come on. I, I, I yeah. did look at last year, yeah, but a lot mm -hmm. of this is so abstract. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, yeah, that did happen. No, it didn't happen. Yeah, it's literally mm -hmm. on how you interpret it. But um, so I did look at this year, and it's still pretty vague. But we can start oh. off with Alex, and maybe Jacqueline, you can tell me what your zodiac is because I, 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 um, I, I don't know what it is. But for Alex, oh, okay. um. It's what is year Alex? Of, year of change oh. in relationships. Mali, ma. You'll get oh, into okay. a new romantic relationship, get married, Ooh. break what? up, or oh. have a child. Yeah. Also, that's everything. Wait, 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 wait. That just covers everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like I, I could pick, I could just do a random pick, and it, I'm sure it'll be one of them, you know? That's stupid. No, <laughs> basically, like, but no, there isn't. There isn't. You can, there, like, when you wake up, you can breathe. You can, like, basically, you know? it means if you are in a relationship, you're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> because. No, it could be marriage or have a child, basically. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's true. Well, for a guy that can still be fucked. <laughs> well, I mean, well, depends how you interpret so, it. So anyway, I'm looking for some good news about you, Alex. Yeah. Okay. And also, though, you've got to be careful with some of your finances because apparently there are some sizable expenses coming your way. Yeah, well, that's so, every year. There's nothing happen, different right? there. That's like every year. That's like no difference. <laughs> like, when is there never a sizable expense? So for Long Long, mm. who is the year of the snake. Snake. Yeah, so it said that you have a, you had a year of instability and drastic mm. changes last year, right? Yeah. And that this will still actually hover all mm. the way up to April this year. Um, yeah. It did, however, say that mm. your goodwill and your good deeds will turn your misfortune into good luck, which I also think is like fucking you don't need to tell me that like it's fucking yeah, obvious like no, like, like no shit right yeah no shit yeah. <laughs> yeah it did have a warning though like mm -hmm. alex it said you have to be careful lending money to friends apart from daniel <laughs> right yeah, i'm sure it's yeah, definitely Guys said glasses. definitely <laughs> said <laughs> daniel, <laughs> daniel, <laughs> daniel yeah. um, can you give said, me the book that said yeah, that or the uh source yeah and... no no it's uh so man fong yeah i'm so <laughs> Yeah. The amount book. as right. well. Yeah. And it said, yeah. Um, <laughs> said, yeah, be careful lending money to friends because they might yeah. not be able to pay you back for a while. <laughs> All right. <laughs> right. Sounds um sounds like um like what Alex said. Very <laughs> vague, but yes. <laughs> All right. Right. I mean, like, it's kind of obvious, right? If somebody yeah. is asking you for money, obviously doesn't have money. So <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to take him a while to give it back <laughs> but uh, for me it said people in the year of dog which is mm. my year have a chance to meet someone special in the first few months of 2020 so mm. i'm 2020? looking forward to that i hope they're fucking hot you know <laughs> <laughs> if you're not hot please don't like contact yeah them. i just, please. just <laughs> no. i don't think it would categorize in the word special so it wouldn't be them <laughs> right um it's a stable year ahead uh, mm -hmm. after a hard working 2019 and you can finally recharge in 2020 uh, 20 sorry 2021 20, uh it may be a year to earn a promotion or build a better mm -hmm. reputation for your business if you are self-employed mm -hmm. so very open-ended again you know i could say yes that's definitely going to happen whatever uh -huh. yeah 
Um, and what's what are you, Jacqueline? I'm reading mine right now. It's not. <laughs> it doesn't sound the best. Yeah, go on then. Um, it says so. I go by the ox. Uh, that's what my family celebrates. Uh, oh, they should be Ming Yeah. Yeah. So oh. I my Biaojie has been warning me about this year, yeah, saying it's, it's not going to be really good year for you. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm reading mine right now. Um. Well, do you want to? I don't. I'm sure. Like no, no, no. What you read it. Are you okay? No, because I want to have a laugh. It says. Um, <clears throat> In 2021, sentimentally, those born under the ox sign will go through a period as they probably haven't enjoyed in a long time, uh, full of peace, quiet, and well-being in the relationship of the couple and in everything that means developing partnerships and important relationships. Um, in 2021, the hard work, the hardworking, the calm, and the patient nature of the ox will ensure a rich, quote-unquote, harvest and significant achievements as long as the natives don't allow themselves to be carried away by an excessive stubbornness. And then um, for love, the ox seems to have the possibility of laying the foundation of a new love relationship, standing under the sign of an intense mutual attraction, a relationship facilitated by a happy interaction in a social circle. How's that bad? Like, bad? Exactly, that's not that bad. What are you talking about? Yeah. It's, like, it's very no, generic. I mean, it's because she's it's really like, Chinese. All bad. she wants to hear is like, you're going to make a fuck ton of money. Be rich. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> this no, year I mean, will be like, phenomenal Dan, you if you're making it. money. Every business will be a success. You know, the list goes on. No, no, no. No, no it's exactly what Dan said. Like, I've been warned about this, like something called like fun tai sui. So then yeah. I'm, so my mom like shipped me a bunch of red socks and red uh, like <laughs> underwear. And then my cousin has been like mm-hmm. warning me about all these things like you shouldn't do. So I'm just like, mm. oh. Well, first okay. of all, no, no, no. I, I want to I wanna cut back. Cause first yeah. of all, when I was 12 and 24, they were my best years. I really enjoyed it. And mm-hmm. then they say that I don't really go well with Year of the Rat, which was last year. And mm-hmm. I dare say, even though COVID was bullshit, that was actually one of my favorite years I will always remember. Mm-hmm. And also- That's because that you met me. Some of my... No, yeah, well, I agreed, agreed. I'm not gonna disagree yeah. there. And then, like, <laughs> and then um, some of my closest relationships are actually Year of the Rat. So I'm thinking mm-hmm. all this Hong Kong malarkey, uh, no, this Chinese New Year malarkey doesn't seem to make sense. Mm. Hopefully. Uh, don't put too much thought into it. No, no, it's not hopeful. It's fact. Like, do not put too much attention to it. Yeah. Okay. I've got people telling yeah. me do not yeah. travel. Like, this year, just avoid all travels. And <laughs> like, oh, how? Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard that, yeah. You're going to say something, Long? Yeah, like, I think we should kind of explain what Fantai Shui is to people listening. Okay, um, Fantai Shui is it? basically, if you are the year of that year, so next year is the year of the ox, and Jacqueline is year of the ox. So if it's your year, um, it's 12 not year good. cycle. Yeah, 12 years. Every- it's not good for yeah. you. It's not actually, you know, a lot of Westerners will think, yeah, it's my year. No, like in Chinese culture, <laughs> it's not good for you. And uh, something ominous tends to happen, mm-hmm. basically. And you kind of have to, well, if you're really superstitious, you kind of prepare prior for it by doing mm-hmm. certain things to kind of dispel that um, mm-hmm. ominous thing basically Mm. so that's what it is but uh talking about you know well who knows if these predictions are right you know whether these Mm -hmm. perceptions or understandings are correct but anyway it's a bit of fun um i wanted to ask though what are the biggest misconceptions about you as a person and jacqueline you can't say i'm talking about like ig so you can't say like everybody thinks i'm a guy because we all know that not not that you're a guy but everybody thinks you're a guy um, <laughs> she is a guy. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people think Let's so. no, not just Let's any just... guy, guys. Not just She's any just guy. Tra- a middle-aged yeah. European guy. Yeah. Transitioning right now. Yeah. That's so stereotyped because <laughs> no, anybody who's into vintage watches has some taste, in, has some taste, must be a middle-aged European guy. I mean, what? But Jacqueline yeah. doesn't doesn't have enough arm hair. So that gives it away. <laughs> It's like, yeah. you know, when you, you know how most of the watch pages, like you don't see the face. So you can just judge by the arm hair and you're like, okay, European, Arab, you can just tell Asian, skinny wrists, no hair. <laughs> mm. 
So what do you think the biggest misconception is? And I don't actually know what mine is. Alex, I need some thinking time. How about you, Alex? Apart um, from easy James one Bond. for me. No, no, no. no. It, yeah, not James Bond. Uh, the easiest one for me is actually people think I'm extroverted. Mm. Uh, that's a damn, that was a good one. Me. <laughs> Mm. no because people think like when they you know when they speak to me or they you know they hear me talk they feel oh man you must like go out all the time you must be going party i'm like no i actually do not i go home and just relax and chill so, <laughs> <don't flex. laughs> so that's a, that's one of the easiest misconceptions it's like okay uh yeah fair i can yeah. see why people would think that about you um mm. long, long? Mm. i think uh, uh oh the most common one i think they think i don't work yeah, <laughs> that's oh. the one I get the most. Yeah, really? Uh, <clears throat> like, what what do people say? Like, they're like, um, so oh, I wish I were you. Do they actually go straight up? Do you work, or is it a feeling you get? No, they're like, um, how do you kill time then? The whole day, what are you <laughs> doing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then more recently, it's like, I'm I'm so happy for you for coming out. <laughs> and I was like, I, I'm not lesbian, but like, even if I were, like, I have no problem coming out. Like, I wouldn't yeah. wait till now. Yeah. yeah. No, I have so yeah. much fun every time you post a photo yeah. with you and Fiona, yeah. like, especially yeah. on your um, feed. I'm like, yeah, I'm so happy for you guys. Like, you, you guys look so happy together. And then people like my comment. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Jack. Um. I think similar to what Alex said, like a lot of people um, assume that I'm the most comfortable, like when I'm um, uh, surrounded with a lot of people and then like um, in like a huge group of friends. But then actually I quite like I enjoy and prefer some quiet time and and smaller groups of people. yeah, I think that's like a mis. Oh, and then another one is like um, some people think that I'm uh, really good at reaching out to people and expressing my feelings, but <laughs> actually it's like the uh, the other side around. Like especially when I'm trying to, I, I hide a lot more than I express. I I won't say I hide. It's just I'm not effective in expressing um, oh. when it comes to like feelings sometimes. Oh. Mm, okay and daniel what yourself you, um yeah. yeah uh but i think the there's a there's a misconception about my age <laughs> like i think everybody mm. thinks like i'm really young <laughs> yeah um, you are really young yeah thanks thanks jacqueline yeah we, we were just having a conversation about lassie the other day <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i didn't know what that yeah was. definitely yeah exactly and you didn't know what lassie was um <laughs> But everybody thinks I'm really young because of my face, because I have mm. such a baby face. Um, yeah. And then I think, uh, to some extent, yeah, still uh, the introvert extrovert thing. Yeah, everybody. Mm. But I'm totally not how. Well, maybe I am a little bit, but not how I am completely. If you have to find me at a quiet time, and there's a really, really, actually, yeah, there's a really, really serious side to me that mm-hmm. I think you all, all of you know about, but nobody knows really, unless you actually work with me. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. But, but, I, yeah. but I think the biggest misconception people have about introverts is not that we hide at home and we don't go out. Like I can go yeah, out just know day. how just, to. Yeah. yeah, and it has to be the right group of people. Mm. Well, the, the biggest misconception, level. the misconception is yeah. the misconception of introverts mm-hmm. because there is a lack of understanding <laughs> yeah. of introverts and actually what mm-hmm. they want. So I think that's the biggest, biggest thing. And thankfully, you know, we all, we all are. So we kind of get each other in that kind of aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, but continuing on from that, what has been the weirdest DM you've got? This Long has to start first. <laughs> uh, Joel, we could just focus this on Long because yeah, exactly. <laughs> she must have she so must have many so stories. Ready, you know? Yeah. Okay. Do you read all of them? I remember now. No, I, I just can't anymore. So I generally like a lot of them just send on like whatever, like hearts, fire, whatever. So I'll just basically double tap everything. Yeah. Um, 
but I, I'll tell you something amazing that happened recently. Um, there's, um, there's this restaurant in Singapore called Isora that is just impossible to book. So it's like the moment you open the website, I started in December opening this website and you just keep scrolling. It's fully booked and it's like July fully booked. So I'm just like, I give up. I'm not going to book for August, November, mm. December, right? Um, and then I, I tried everything. I asked all the F&B people I knew. I asked all the people who I thought were like big foodies in Singapore, nothing. And then this random person on Instagram, um, like I opened his page and it's all food. It's just bread, actually. It was pictures of bread. <laughs> and then we were talking and then he's like, uh, what have you been trying to eat? And I was like, a star, da, da, da. And then randomly, he was like, look, um, I'm going to give out my reservation because I just went there recently and I'm waiting for the new menu. You can have my reservation. And I was like, oh, my God, 2021 is an amazing year. <laughs> like, so I'm, <laughs> so I'm just been like, shit. And I was telling Fiona, dude, you just have to just ask every single person, whatever you want to eat, just spam everyone. <laughs> just say, I'm, I'm trying to book this place. And so, yeah. That's been like the highlight. Is that highlight legit though? That's Did you actually manage cool. to? Yeah, they have you actually managed me, to go there so to eat? The, oh, you have. Oh, I'm you going on this. I'm going oh, on the seventeenth. Okay. Um, they email. I mean, like oh. these restaurants are definitely email. Like, what's your credit card? Da da da. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Uh, can you make sure yeah. the email is right? Can, uh, have you have you cross checked that the email is right, not some? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, in case I, I, I know you're quite diligent, but there, right? you know. how do you spell <laughs> exactly. this restaurant? What cuisine do they cook? Um, it's fusion E S O R A. Okay. But you know, this whole thing, I think last year when we were doing the podcast, we were talking about revenge spending, right? And a lot of yeah. people were asking about the watch industry and revenge spending. Da, da, da. And, um, when I came to Singapore at this time, the biggest surprise was that because nobody could travel, everyone was putting their money. Oh, everyone was spending their money eating. So every single high end restaurant is fully booked, mm -hmm. like it, just months mm -hmm. ahead. There's just no way. So literally, so like tonight I'm going to Japanese, right? I just literally go there and I just book every month ahead already. It's just impossible. And I'll just be like, any time you give me any date, I'll just, just go. Just take it, just take it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. It's interesting, yeah. So how about anybody else? Yeah, what about you guys? This place looks well, Actually, amazing. that's not a weird DM. That's yeah. actually a good DM. That's like, sounds yeah, like one of the best it's, DMs ever. it's good. Yeah. No, you have well, to give I, us a I, I had a guy. I had a guy, right? <laughs> hey. I, I, yeah. I sent it to Long Long. Yeah. He was like, he sent me a heart. So it was a guy that sent me a heart. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one. It wasn't the, uh, mm. like, normal red heart. It was one of these fancy ones. It was, no, it was a pulsating the, it was heart the or something. pink one with <laughs> yeah. the little I remember, yeah, it was a yeah. pink one. It was a pink yeah. one from a guy, and that's a bit weird. I mean, the hearts are mm -hmm. weird anyway. So... Okay. I kind of like ignored it. Yeah. I mean, what do you reply to that? I'm not sending you a heart. Yeah. I'm not no. saying thanks. Yeah. And then um, he messaged me like a couple of days later and gave me the middle finger. <laughs> and I was like, and then I was like, actually, huh? So I actually wrote, huh? And he goes, oh, now you respond. And I was like, <laughs> and then I was like, I can't deal with this. <laughs> yeah, I, was like, <laughs> I was like, basically said, uh, I can't be what you need me to be. Yeah, yeah, thanks for the message. See you later. <laughs> it's like a, oh, it's man. like a, a bad breakup text. Like, yeah, right. You yeah. expect too much from me. I can't deal with someone like you. Sorry, bye. <laughs> yeah, locked. <laughs> yeah. So that was like the most recent one. Yeah. Oh, I can think of something. Just I've been getting a lot of male um, escorts recently. Oh, me and, too. Not male escorts. Yeah. Female. Like escorts. female. Yeah, I get pulled into do these. You, like, do you get? Groups. Yeah, these groups, right? Yeah, like these links. Yes. So annoying. Yes. Now I just don't I get even like bother. three of them a day. And then I have to block every time the person and then delete the message. I mean, it's like the a registration group. process is just way too drawn out for me to get interested <laughs> in. You know, like... Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, but it's like you can, you can new tell, business idea coming. Like like the link, like you can read the words in the link. It's yeah. like Yeah, exactly. You can I'm gonna think of something is, right? to go for and Daniel you... now. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'll just I'll just drag you into these pods, these cells that, that <laughs> are pushing these these things. And I mean, uh, yeah, it's so boring. Yeah. 
But, oh wait, um, I, so I yeah. need to tell you. So this, um, it's usually Chinese escorts, but then I got an Italian, a uh, little young boy recently, like so young, like 16, 16. Um, so he looks, obviously he looks like a print ad model. Like he's hot, right? Abs, everything. So he keeps sending me selfies, like of himself. Like, I don't know, like sitting at a nice cafe, drinking coffee, a topless, whatever. So I was like, listen, I love fat guys. Like you're just not my type, <laughs> right? And then um, never hear from him. He comes back to me. He's like, look, I, I can't put on that much weight. And then he starts again. So he's sending me all these um, photos again. And then I'm just ignoring him. So he sends me a story photo, like the bomb ones, right? But because it's like, because I'm curious, because the other ones are all like actual photos. So when I opened it, I screen capped it. But I didn't know, like when you screen cap the thing, he knows. Yeah. <laughs> so I screen capped it, sent it to another, I sent, sent it to another girl who's um, also on Instagram, who's like a watch collector. And I was like, hey, this, this is up your alley, right? <laughs> And then the, the guy, the guy's like, I charge for screen capping. How much are you going to pay me? And I was just like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. The oh, the, the, one, the, the weird thing is that he actually yeah. knows that you screen capped it. So then he I thought know. that you were intrigued. And then you're like, oh, my God. Like, she went into the effort of, like, saving my photo. Oh, God. So gross. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, right? Yeah. Everybody's gonna actually going to think that <laughs> it's a fat guy now. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Everyone's going to get, I've send got a chance, you know. Send them my way. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but actually, it kind of overlaps into the next question, which was, does anybody... Well, I do actually want to give a shout out to, um, I think he's Uncomplication on mm. uh, Instagram. That's yeah, constantly yeah. recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Uncomplicate. Yeah, Uncomplication, I think. And then, um, yeah, yeah. I just want to say thanks for like the nice messages. And we, mm. we do so get some amazing ones. Um, have you guys had any recent like amazing ones? Jacqueline, you have a story to tell. I don't know if you're allowed to tell it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, I've uh, received... You don't need to shout him out if you don't, you know, if it's private. No, I, I've received... Um... <clears throat> so I was telling Dan about this. Like, sometimes I get surprised by how much... Well, like, A, like, people actually listen to this. Mm -hmm. And then uh, B is, like, they actually spend a lot of time to write positive feedback and, and their actual thoughts and reflections. So I would get a lot of... Um, like I would get a, a few every week of people like writing paragraphs and then when I when I when I see them I get a little overwhelmed because I just feel like oh my gosh like this is like this is actually so cool and so nice but then I didn't expect any of this so um this is like, obviously like, in delete a good way, the message right? no, no no obviously in a good way so recently um oh nice gentleman... delete. <laughs> yeah. no 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 because like sometimes when i read it and i'm just like holy shit like this is such like this is stuff that my mom like stuff that my mom doesn't even say to me like it's so nice um and then it's coming from like a complete stranger um so then obviously i i respond um and then recently one of the um, messages I received was from this gentleman and uh, he was so nice in in what he said basically he said uh, um, he likes how open and authentic the podcast is and also he was saying um, going back to the question that Dan asked me during during my episode like oh what do you want to achieve in life um, and he said um, you know you you said it in a way that even when I was your age, I wouldn't have articulated as well, but I know exactly that's what I would have said and how I felt when I was your age. And uh, so we started chatting and then, um, so from there, like we started chatting and then um, about watches and, and what um, lessons and, and, and what like we, we got from this, you know, journey and, and whatnot. And I realized he's a really, um, serious collector of George Daniels mm -hmm. um and then he showed me um a couple of pieces um and it was just like holy like tell yeah, me some more amazing pieces, <laughs> yeah. but um yeah so that was that was absolutely just uh a complete surprise 
and amazing. And um, so he was saying how, oh, you know, it's actually even more of a friendship for him because when he obviously, he's, you know, he's been collecting for a long time. Um, so for him, it's really seeing Effie Jorn like before he even like launched his brand or at the very early points of when he was launching his launching his brand and seeing how the brand has grown um so I thought that was like I mean something that we would never experience right because um, we weren't collecting back then but then uh, he was telling me about these friendships and personal relationships and the um you know ideologies behind watchmaking especially Daniel's like what vision he had back then in like the 19. 19- 90s that, that was just amazing um yeah mm. well um we need to dedicate some time to watches now and that kind of you kind of touched on it there so i'm gonna go straight into it um what does everybody think about these 5 7 11 rumors or are they still rumors anymore i don't think they're rumors anymore yeah. right Actually, well, sorry. What, what's people... the news? I keep, is it what the the one about them being discontinued? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, right. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. So we do we are we are we quashing that? It's not a rumor anymore. It's actually going to happen. I mean, I saw this person's story the other day. Um, you know how there's a feature on Chrono Twenty Four where you can input a watch, and then you can watch it like grow, like the trend, kind of like stock movement, hmm. and then. Um, I saw his story in a show that it grew by 400% or something um, at the current price. And I'm just like, it's, <laughs> it's like ridiculous. Um, but then did you guys see Zoe's post with Bernie Sanders uh, no. regarding to the 5711? What did she put? It was, um, you know, how like during the inauguration, that, yeah. like, Bernie was like, you know, that post. Yeah, so yeah. And she photoshopped that inside her own photo. And the caption yeah. was like, Bernie, I told you, you should have bought that Fet 5711 from me last <laughs> week. Look what you missed out. <laughs> and it's just like Bernie being grumpy. Um, yeah. That's such a good sticker. Like, yeah. I use it for everything now. It's so yeah. funny. How, how is it really like? Yeah, yeah go on. Did anyone buy GameStop and follow the whole like GameStop and AMC uh, thing? I've been I've been following it. I didn't buy it. No, I have just been looking okay. at it. No, have AMC you? AMC is just sad. Yeah, AMC, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, I've been following the Reddit. It's just really interesting. Like, um, I I I find it um, like I prefer this kind of like protesting over mm. physically people doing stuff. I just find it really amusing. Yeah. I don't want to create any sort of conspiracies but actually for yeah. the um, trade is actually good news because you want people to flood into the market you want it's kind of like gambling right you let them win first and then once people are like oh i've tried <laughs> it i won money from it they start putting more mm. money down and then oh, the house awkward. always wins yeah. so actually yeah. if, if it, it, i'm not having a conspiracy or anything but i'm just telling people to be a bit careful because you mm. feel like you've won something from doing nothing trust me it's not gonna last yeah. long so like mm. get out watch mm-hmm. you're still ahead is what i would say but um, very strong yeah. alex advice there but no no but, yeah. you but thing if is, you don't know what you're if you're if you don't know exactly what you're putting your money into yeah yeah it's always a risk isn't it exactly and i, I always suggest to people that um you know there are people that are very smart at this game so don't think for a moment that you newbie can come in there and think like you know mm. better <laughs> like, yeah. like uh, your luck wears quite thin and I, the whole yeah. point of the market is they actuate. if it goes straight up in a straight line basically then they don't no one makes money the whole point of how they make money is then it needs to be dips in the market that's how they capitalize yeah. on growth yeah. so like again just mm-hmm. um it's it, a hard psychological thing to get out of because like you said yeah. if you make money out of not doing a lot right you it's weird how you attribute attribute it to you were somehow really good at it like I'm, I know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Like, no, but, but, and it becomes but, like but, a, a circle where it just reinforces it. I think like for, but, for most average folk, I think. No, agreed. Um, but psychologically, we've always been attracted to like action from a distance. Like we human beings, we like to do stuff without 
putting any effort in and getting the best result. That's typically mm. how we think. So, um, so for this opportunity, again, like, yeah, the news is great. Bitcoin's another great one. You know, there's, mm. there is probably some sort of substance and you can mm-hmm. use all the evidence you want to back it up. But again, you just have to mm-hmm. be very careful. And I always have this traditional mindset is if you didn't have any contribution or talent going towards this thing that you're doing, I don't think you deserve to make money from it. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it has to be, mm. you know, put wisely you have to think about it did um, you see how dog coin jumped like a hundred percent yeah well yeah yeah, yeah. It's anything like that yeah it's not everything yeah, yeah it's it's been a crazy <laughs> year yeah <laughs> um talking back to watches for a minute you know like rolex are apparently releasing a new watch Do you, like have you heard about this does anybody no. okay so apparently oh. they're releasing a new explorer um i think it's a new explorer 2 might be wrong. I think it's a new Explorer 2. It might be Explorer. Anyway, it's an Explorer. Um, is anybody excited about that? I think you know my standpoint about Rolexes. So that's a no, right? <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys? Not really. If I were Not to get really. an Explorer, I would get a vintage one. Me too. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. so... But for everybody, there's a lot of people that listen to this that do like Rolex or probably thinking about Rolex as their next piece or their first piece. Mm. Which Rolex in the current lineup is the one to have? Current lineup. Like, are we no. talking like for ourselves or as a recommendation for someone else? Both, I guess. I mean, for me, um, God, actually, I thought I had it really clear in my mind and it's not so clear mm. now. Like how current though? The current lineup. In the current lineup. Oh, okay. So what you can actually buy now? Yeah. I'll I'll, I'll say mine. So technically, Wait. it's not a Rolex. I yeah. like the Tudor Harrods edition. If I was to force myself to get something, oh, you can't get it. It's I'll not in that. the current lineup. Technically, it is. No, because it's a limited edition. But every watch in Rolex technically is a is one that you can't really get authorized either. You have to kind of uh, buy the no, 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 no. That's not a Rolex. Don't say Rolex on the badge, mate. It says Tudor. Like, it's, it's the same shit, basically. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's cool. That's cool. The Tudor green, the the Harrods green. Yeah. So um, for me, probably, I think yeah. I'm struggling between um, Rolex Explorer One oh. and uh, Pepsi GMT. Oh. yeah so between those two for me um i think gmt useful complication um as good looking watch especially i think on the jubilee bracelet now um and it also has that kudos so if you can get it, it you've got mm. that kudos um explorer one because i actually think that's probably for me the most timeless design in the rolex lineup mm. for me okay like, perfect um how about you jacqueline If I were to choose one out of their current lineup, well, it's hard because they're all like really big for me to wear. But then Mm -hmm. from a design perspective, I really like the white gold day day with the green Mm -hmm. dial. Um, Like moss green. Might have been platinum. Might have been Mm -hmm. platinum. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But anything with the green face. or I would just get a yellow OP, um, like the new one that everyone's like going mm. crazy about. I actually, funny story, I actually went into my AD the other day mm. for the first time, like the first time I've ever walked into an AD um, in, in Vancouver. And then uh, <laughs> I go in and uh, uh, the, this lady greets me and uh, she's like, oh, are you looking for a watch for yourself or for someone else? And so it was for myself. Oh, okay. Let me show you. And then she went on to show me an array of twenty-four millimeter, uh, twenty-eight millimeter, um, two-tone Rolex oysters, um, <laughs> with uh, diamonds blinged out everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> with the diamond like on the indices and whatnot. And then um, I was like, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. But actually, can I see like this and this? And she's like, oh, okay. Because um, I was in- inquiring about the OP. And then she was like, oh, yeah, you know, we actually don't take, like, orders for that. And I was like, yeah, but you have a wait list, right? Yeah, but, like, yeah, so whatever. So then um, we, we talked a little bit more. 
and then I kind of I kind of like told her like I have mainly vintage watches but then I would really like a modern one where I can just you know not think too much and and wear around a little bit and then um she was like oh yeah what do you what do you usually wear so then um I wasn't wearing a watch for this and I just showed her like a couple of the ones I usually wear um and then she was like oh that's pretty cool let me take your contact and then I'll call you if something comes up um and then like two days later she calls me and then she's like actually there's an op do you want to do you want to come and try it on uh and then and then i go in and actually it was a 34 because i told her i wanted a 34 it's like the best size and then i didn't know like before trying it on that they actually changed the case shape so the 34 really wears like a 31 32 and now i'm like okay the 34 doesn't work now can you let me know like let me know if you have the 36 and she's like yeah i can't promise anything i know i know um but just (laughs) you know put me on the list (laughs) <laughs> so yeah those two the 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 green dial day date or like an yellow op okay mm. long, long? Mm. um mine is um rainbow rolex does that count <laughs> yeah that right counts. rainbow rolex yeah. or That's the, the daytona the tiger. everybody the yeah daytona. daytona um or the eye of the tiger okay yeah it's very you i gotta say yeah yeah. I Ivan had one for sale. I should have uh, asked him to sell it to you. I had two. I Ivan, think. Yeah, um, I had two, I think. I'm sure you know what he just picked up, right? He just picked no. up the RM. Maybe. What? Which one has he got? Yeah, that, that's one. Oh, that RM. And then, yeah. and then a Patek. <sighs> oh yeah, that I saw that one. That yeah, that's guy, big, that, yeah. No, but I don't think that was for him. No, that diamond one can't be for him. That's definitely. Oh, wait, who for picked him. up? I'm sorry, who, or Alex? Uh, no. Ivan, yeah, I don't think uh, you are a mutual Ivan, friend. Yeah, oh. <laughs> he 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 picks up everything. Like yeah. there isn't stuff that yeah. he doesn't pick up. There is no um, filter on what he picks up. I think he's, whole he's like, yeah. I think to some extent, like Chester, but worse because Chester actually has a little bit of taste and understanding. Whereas I think Ivan just goes if he's got yeah whatever, I'll just buy it. Yeah, literally, <laughs> like full retail. And if I can't buy it, I'll pay exactly. premium on the premium. Exactly. Market. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. Care. That. Exactly. Care that. At all. Yeah. Uh, a watch um, retailer's dream, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, I take that back. I actually, I thought of one. So talking about OP, I like uh, the Tiffany blue one, but on a black Noto strap. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. Mm. A bit boring, actually. It's boring, but them. that's the only the yeah. only one like you would consider. I would consider. Yeah. Say. Okay. Anyway, yep. Mm. What does everybody or does anybody know what's coming this year, like in terms of watches? And actually, going on from that, because how is everyone feeling about watches? Because this prolonged COVID thing has kind of dropped a little bit my, you know, I'm not researching, I'm reading watch books, but I'm not actively, I don't feel it, you know, mm-hmm. about watches right now. Just not really top of my agenda. So yeah, how's everybody feeling about watches and I guess what you want to see, I guess, this year? It's funny how you said like, because of COVID, like why do you think you're not feeling watches because of COVID? Um, maybe because you can't, maybe because the releases, you can't really go and see them, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah, maybe it's just the... When, you, when I do go and see watches, I like to go with my friends and everybody, you know, right now there are some people with the COVID attitude of, you know, I'll go out, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then some mm-hmm. people are like, nah, I won't go out. And it's mm-hmm. almost become a bit of a taboo thing because if you're one of those people yeah. that go out, you're like, oh my God, like yeah. you can't be my friend now. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's, there's that. Maybe it's also prioritized other things mm-hmm. for me. Or maybe... There just isn't anything inspirational on the market that is really grabbing my attention where I think, oh, wow, I really, really want to see that. Yeah. Maybe the communication side from the brand is lacking uh, where they can't rely on the same marketing spiel Mm. um, that they've used in yesteryear. Also, how brands make you feel special also Mm. is more difficult because getting that personal touch when they can't meet you is pretty difficult. Mm-hmm. But maybe also there's just not a lot for me to get excited. I saw the um, ceramic double balance, by the way, and uh, 
yeah, it doesn't really do it for me. It is, mm. it's, it's how I, it reinforced what I thought it would be uh, when mm. I saw it in the picks. I feel the stainless steel one feels actually more premium. And I mm-hmm. feel the color, con- color contrast between the open worked and the case material. So obviously in the ceramic, it's black against still mm-hmm. like a black. I think it's much, the, the, the stainless steel offers a much better backdrop to that movement. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, yeah, when you hold it, that's, it just doesn't feel as premium, premium Is it as, very light? Yeah, it's, yeah, light. it's light. It's quite light. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It feels, mm-hmm. doesn't feel as premium as the stainless steel. And I know, yeah, it's not going to scratch and all this kind of stuff, but yeah, it's, I'm not that bothered about scratches. Mm. I'm more bothered about dings than than mm. scratches, um, especially if you're going to keep a watch. It's totally unrealistic that you keep it in pristine condition if you wear mm-hmm. it. So, yeah, that watch was everybody again didn't really get me up for it, and maybe it's also you know, last year I did spend a lot of time in AP. Mm-hmm. Um, the watches I want are all Royal Oak shape or they're all Royal Oak shape. So it's really just on the dial that is it going to do it for you? Because mm-hmm. yeah, we all know the Royal Oak shape's great, but how many do you need of that kind of shape? And because of it's that shape, that the feeling of that watch, which has been, it's always been quite masculine, always a beautiful design, all that kind of stuff is still quite inherent. In but then you can say that about Lange when they're all round watches. And you said about, yeah, Patek and Nautilus is all that sort of like, I mean, to some extent, there's only so much you can realistically do. Is The whole point of watches is the finer <clears throat> details that you kind of pick up on that resonates with you. Well, I don't know. I mean, like case, case, um, even on the rounded case, yeah, you get different finishing on the beveling on the case itself. Mm-hmm. So you can have more of a pebble shape. You can have like quite a flat shape. You can have mm-hmm. uh, also the lugs makes a big difference to the to the watch. So mm-hmm. all of it put together makes quite a different proposition. But yeah, just generally not anything. Even when last year when you had what the new 5370, um, yeah, it's kind of still kind of like the, the black one more than the, uh, the blue one. I think black's really, mm-hmm. really sharp. Mm-hmm. Um, although admittedly, I have not seen that blue one in, in the flesh. Um, but it just goes to show I'm struggling to find the pieces that I actually remember from last year you're still thinking about the 5370 then (laughs) well i mean i like the 5370 but it's one of those where if you don't see it maybe i don't think about it yeah right Mm. and so you don't see it that often um but yeah not not really anything i mean how are guys you feeling and is there anything you want to see this year or get i feel the same as you like i think just the priorities are different right like um occasionally i'll browse on like chrono or i'll read something but then i just have no urge to get it and i I kind of think it's like a chicken and egg thing right so you kind of go most of the day i'm by myself and then you're doing sports or you um you just go out for a few hours to meet some friends right Mm. but you have no urge to actually be like oh i have fun i need to wear this because there's no gtgs Mm. and Mm. there's nothing And then, um, like, even with uh, shopping and stuff, like, not even watches, just in general, I'm just like, why would I get this? What, like, when am I going to wear it? There's no reason. I think for for watches with us, and I did do some interviews in in preparation for some podcasts later on in the week. Mm -hmm. uh, For a lot of Asians, Orientals, Mm. wearing a watch, the function of the watch is really status and Mm -hmm. accessory on what you're wearing and if you're not going out um Mm -hmm. to you're not dressing up it kind Mm -hmm. of lacks that function because a lot of things are done through zoom you're just not going to see my watch right so i think that's maybe a factor but then having said it you know you said singapore's like almost back to normal singapore shanghai that's pretty but i don't think it is it's the tone of yeah the there's atmosphere. a lot of uncer- yeah, yeah. this uncertainty so you're kind of like what's going to happen next year so so what if you buy a bunch of watches this year yeah and then what uh, yeah yeah and even with clothing like you say yeah i've got a whole bunch of clothing where mm-hmm. i've seen stuff and before i probably would have bought it now then but i'm yeah. like you know, i'll just for whatever reason just 
yeah i don't have that urgency to buy it right now yeah because yeah. i know i can't get it like so i mean i'm having everything shipped into hong kong anyway so i can't get it mm. and then until the borders mm-hmm. open so i have no urgency to mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. just gonna no urgency yeah. i guess is that how everyone's yeah. feeling then yeah basically and because i don't really follow the new watches as much um so i was having this conversation with another collector and i was asking him what's your buying process like because mm-hmm. recently i've been really trying to understand my own buying process for a couple of reasons one is just to control urges sometimes mm-hmm. and then um learn more about myself and pattern and whatnot and we basically came to a conclusion where we we have the same buying process where it's split up into two parts for 80 or 90 percent of the time it's exploratory right you see something online and yeah you like it you like this detail about it but it's just you know inherently it's not enough for you to go and say okay yeah I really need that or it's really different from what I already have or Mm -hmm. it's going to offer something new to what I currently you know what's currently in my collection or rotation but then for that um other 10 percent is when you see something and before you even reach out to the person or um yeah ask about the price and whatever you know that it's like a kick you you know that okay yeah that is something really special or you really like that you you can feel it at least i can Mm -hmm. so and that but that's for like 10 percent of the time or maybe even less and um so, so I always have a list of pieces that I'm trying to to get, but I'm never really like purposefully hunting any of them. It's really what comes around. And sometimes um, the one piece that gets me the most excited might not even be on that list to start with. And that might be a complete surprise to me. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and I think it really goes down to timing and your priorities. Um, mm-hmm. So like 2020, I mean, so far my priority hasn't really been watch focus because I've been um, busy with other stuff. But then a few weeks ago, I was browsing online on Instagram. And then this was like uh, not 8 8 a.m., like right before I was going to sleep because I've been on Asian schedule for like the past few weeks. And right Mm -hmm. before I was going to sleep, I was browsing Instagram and I see this one post of this watch and I know the seller and it was something I, I wasn't expected to to like or whatever. But then I saw that dial and then I was like, oh, that's really nice. And then I just messaged to the person. And then so that was like a purchase that I completely was not expecting. And right. yeah, so that's like the 10%. But then the 90% is like, mm. oh, you see something, you might message the person. And you're like, okay, thank you for the detail. Thank you for the info. Mm. Um, maybe next time we'll all think about it. And then you really don't act on that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I, I think um, the thing with COVID as well was that um, you know how you were talking about how you kind of like reflect on your buying patterns right yeah I think with the whole of last year every single time I've had the impulse to buy something I'll think about um, what triggered it like why do I suddenly need that thing and then I think more recently I realized that um, I get so much more of a kick from like making money say from like trading right or stocks or whatever and then I'll and as compared to buying something and getting that thing um so then I'll get these urges like okay say with shoes right I'll just be like okay this whole year I'm not gonna buy anything but occasionally you walk by and you're like oh shit I need that so you just buy it right um but generally now I look at everything and I always I was just having this conversation with my friend who just put in an order for a bag right and then she walked out and she's like, I don't even know why I did that. And then mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, imagine you just took that money and you like threw it into like say Tesla. Yeah. And then I said, just imagine you just waited one month. She's like, yeah. Like you kind of like, like I feel like, like with a lot of people, yeah. You, you just have these um, moments that actually just leave you if you just ignore it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I don't know, Alex. I don't know if it's a guy or a girl thing. I don't, Alex, like, mm-hmm. I don't function like that. I've never functioned like that. Like, do you, how about you, Alex? Is it a guy or a girl thing where 
you can see, like you've just said you see something you message the guy and then maybe you end up buying it right or you have mm. that uh yeah I just no it doesn't happen like that for me at all never has <laughs> no it has you, to Alex? be it think, has you, to be like something so I think really logically, special. You mean. Yeah, yeah. Quite like, logically. Right. Maybe because in the past I have, a, you know, um, accumulated a lot of shit. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, <clears throat> maybe I've, I don't, don't want to sound patronizing, but maybe I've gone through that process of that self-reflection and realized I just don't need a lot of shit, you know, mm-hmm. in my life. And it doesn't really do anything for me. So I have to be really, really sure. Because also when you get that watch in and it doesn't do it for you or get anything in and it doesn't do it for you, Mm. it's a shit feeling. It's a really shit feeling. Yeah. Yeah, You don't want that feeling. And then, Mm. and then you think maybe I can sell it on eBay or get rid of it. And then you see, fuck, what an idiot I was. Yeah. Like Mm -hmm. I've just literally just thrown the money down the drain. And um, I guess it, it top, you know, it, it touches on the, the topic of consumerism. You know, mm-hmm. how much are we being programmed to think that we need a lot of stuff and actually just draw back? And I think last year, um, because maybe I don't know why, and it was more focused on myself, yeah, it just felt more um, stable, Obvious. you know, and mm-hmm. just not having going up and down, up and down. Mm on Mm. stuff i did have to fight a lot of urges of have nots having i still had to do that Mm. but i was never close to um purchasing something to fulfill that feeling Mm. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah how about you well well, one thing yeah one one thing about me i'll go on to daniel's point um i'm pretty logical so you know for example like my outfits like my suits i have 10 Mm -hmm. suits the only one i'll buy a new one is one of them gets worn and like Mm -hmm. the same with shoes the only like um good thing with mark he's got a company called drop 93 which we mentioned mm, yeah. so if i do get a new mm. pair of shoes in i'll sell my old ones i'll put it on that yeah. store mm. then yeah, i'll buy a new okay. pair so i think for guys and girls are slightly different because our yes. clothing habits mm. like guys with suits we're, we're yeah. quite straightforward you buy a suit you mm-hmm. can wear that and not worry about what season it is mm-hmm. right yeah. but with women you yeah. kind of have four seasons you have different yeah. outfits you have to wear on a regular uh-huh. basis and then there's another thing as well that i found last year as well or maybe in the last few years and it might be different for girls. I'm not sure. I don't want to preempt no. it. I'm not that bothered about being seen in the same clothes. Yeah. Like, mm. and a lot, I know a lot of people, you know, maybe they are, right? Maybe girls are. I don't want to be seen in the same dress or whatever. I'm not actually that mm-hmm. bothered because mm-hmm. if the person I'm talking is bothered about that, then maybe I, should, I shouldn't be talking about him or maybe I just can't even forge a good relationship with him anyway because the values are. Mm-hmm. are different you know i want people to know me for me my 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 taste in watches is something that i really really enjoy not from you know it's actually for myself not mm-hmm. that i want to show other people so yeah it's really my purchasing is really yeah. measured yeah yeah mm-hmm. go on alex talk about that i'd love to ask like of your wardrobe like what is the percentage that you actually wear of your let's say your whole wardrobe yeah it's very of that 100 percent. how much of that do you wear mm, not i mean i'm in the process of like changing it a little bit but yeah. that okay. is a very valid question because for me even with my watches and i know or not a lot if the watches aren't getting worn they shouldn't be in my collection kind of thing mm, right yeah. they, for me they need to be worn um mm-hmm. i need to be able to see them if i don't feel like i want to wear them how much do i like them <laughs> right mm-hmm. so it's about where we had this conversation i think maybe with hugo or we definitely had it with somebody where a uh, miles where it's like cost per wear yeah mm-hmm. and that's something that i i felt really early on um maybe when i was getting into leather shoes because hugo's right yeah oh my god I mean, I'm a bit of a shoe whore anyway, but <clears throat> the leather shoes, you just get one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. Mm-hmm. And you just don't have that many opportunities to wear them. And I'm looking at some of these soles that I've got. I mean, they're not being brand worn. new. Yeah, <laughs> brand, new. <laughs> brand new. And like hand grade, all this kind of shit. I'm like, fuck. And now I'm trying to sell them onto eBay. Uh, mm-hmm. Sell them on like Xianyu. You know what I mean? I mean, then I feel like, what a fucking idiot. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. So... 
So yeah, maybe. So it's what, that. so you didn't ask my question. So of your wardrobe, let's say hundred percent, how much of that do you wear, uh, Daniel? Probably, probably, it's definitely below ten percent. Uh, wow. Probably about wow. Wow. Five. Long, long. Seven percent. Same. Long, long. Jacqueline. Yeah, same. So basically, the like, you know, the, all the money you think about it that you could have <laughs> had left over, you could buy like Tesla stocks. You'd be rich, you know. Yeah. Basically, well, before uh, COVID, probably like fifty percent. Now it's like yeah. down to like. Oh no no no! 1%. But that's, uh, that's yeah, Just sure. yeah, sure. yeah. It's probably your like t-shirt and like <laughs> yeah. jeans or something. No, yeah. but there are some there are some staples that I'm looking to get into the the wardrobe, which I think will last the test of time. I because yeah. I went to Shanghai and was assimilating Shanghai. I did go to this more casual kind of phase i still mm. think there is a place for that like for me because it's so comfortable mm. Mm. um and if let's say i was hanging around with you guys yeah we might dress up mm. if we were going out to a restaurant mm. but also i'm quite mm. just happy in my slacks right it's just don't i don't really care mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so sneakers all that sneaker culture yeah i wouldn't yeah. I totally drop the number of sneakers i have to a yeah. set mm. ones which i think may be classics and just mm -hmm. keep those that can go yeah. with casual and smart in some way um mm. but yeah I'm, I'm really shifting a lot out really which i'm quite happy about yeah it's, it's actually more fun doing that than buying more shit you know yeah <laughs> like thinking it's the about the process of elimination yeah like you really get Refinement. to know which one yeah yeah so anyway moving on to the last two questions very quickly what was the most memorable piece you saw last year wow <laughs> quiet i i know but um am i allowed to say this is on uh, chester's uh balcony the blue color watch why are we not allowed to say what, what well we can watch? say right yeah well, um, chester doesn't care does he it's not chester's you brought it back for someone i bought it back. oh the yeah. is it big db basically yeah, uh, yeah, the DB uh, that was mind blowing. DB twenty eight. Oh yeah, you can Sapphire. say that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was um, that was something. Yeah. Okay, so that's the DB twenty eight Torbion unique piece, fifty odd sapphires in it, mm. um, kind of blue. So that's the piece that you're talking about, um, mm. Alex. Um, I still would say it's uh, Chester's Lange One, the um, oh, the, the Phantom wasn't one, expecting one. that one. From I, you. Well, no, no, because first of all, because uh, I've always had this thing where you know I really like Lange, but I was never you know can imagine myself buying one. So when I looked at that one, that was the first time when I thought to myself, I actually would own that watch. Mm. So, so you're still in love with instinct, it, whether it's the best one or not. Yeah, yeah. So whether it's the best one or not, it doesn't matter. It's the one that actually pushed me emotionally to think, okay, I could, I would love to own a Lange, basically. Okay. So right. yeah, still thinking about the it. Lumen. Yes. Yeah, Lumen. That's the one. Sorry. Yes. And Jack. I haven't really seen. <laughs> all right. Pass. I bought them all. I've seen everything. Yeah, I've seen. Yeah. I bought. <laughs> yeah, basically. So I haven't really um, seen like cool. And Daniel. For me, the uh, the Phantom, the Zeitwerk Phantom, oh. that is like, oh, it's so nice, man. Do you like, really? I, I saw that recently and I was actually disappointed. Yeah, I actually I preferred like the Lange One. No, I don't like I It's a big, it, long, long. Like Daniel said, yeah, it's wearable. It's, wearable. it's like a Zeitwerk. Uh, it's, it's wearable. It's wearable. Right. It's yeah. wearable, man. I like it because. Um, I mean, Lange One, right, Lumen? You, I thought the more I saw it, I mm. felt the more it felt a little bit gimmicky, right? A little bit. Mm. That touch of gimmicky came across. Mm -hmm. But the Zeitwerk didn't feel like that. It felt a lot, for me, a lot classier. Yeah, a little, that little bit on the other side. However, I haven't seen it that often. It's a rare piece. Mm. Uh, if I saw it more, would I feel like, yeah, not so great? Maybe um so that was one piece uh the i always think about the kari 28 ti yeah it, it, it i wafts, was just about to say that it it wafts in my mind line, but, every yeah. time like it goes and it comes and it goes yeah, and it comes yeah, yeah and when it does come i never feel like yeah shit like i always think oh, it's really nice man <laughs> like yeah um so that piece 
it's just constantly drifts in my mind. And then, mm-hmm. um, yeah, the the Shanghai Watch Gang, yeah, the DB is just a personal thing from a career wise. Yeah, I would think about that piece. But uh, so three pieces, mm-hmm. I kind of like, yeah, circumvented that question a little bit. But uh, yeah, going on about best memories, what is, since it is really the way to round up this podcast and 2020, because it is going to be goodbye now to 2020. Yeah. What was the best memory you'll take away from that year? Um, You can say like watch memory and then you can maybe say overall. Um, I'm actually quite interested to hear Jacqueline's answer. Because you've been stuck in a house, man, like <laughs> in Vancouver for the whole year. So I'm trying to yeah. think, well, what can you come up with? Um, yeah. Has anybody got their answer ready? Or you want well, you ready to go? I have my yeah. answer ready. Go on. Um, so like you said, I've been really like stuck here. So aside from being on Zoom and um, whatnot, I was really... Hap- like I wouldn't say like it's my memory to take away but um I was really happy when um like my friend came back to Vancouver and then we got to uh spend say like three months um together in Vancouver um because we met in 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 junior high and then we were all going to school here and then she's been away and I've been away. So for us, to, so like, you know, we meet each other all the time in the States, but this is the first time that both of us came back to Vancouver at the same time. And then she basically crashed at my house um, and then her parents came to visit. And then we spent, you know, um, uh, holidays together. Uh, and it was just a really nice like even though it wasn't my family but because she was like one of my closest friends and having her family there it felt very warming for me um and uh we had like a lot of fun together we went on a lot of hikes and um captured a lot of sceneries and ate good food together so Mm. yeah right good that you got some uh personal contact some human contact. yeah i, I, I feel very needed, lucky right? because yeah. of that hey yeah. what about um you getting a cat can we delete that <laughs> Wait, can we delete that why oh my god yes oh my god. okay yes getting luca <laughs> is the memory that i will take away from 2020 <laughs> because <laughs> i'm so sorry babe um Yes, thank you, thank you, Long. Because I swear to God, this little cat is—I'm—I'm I'm absolutely biased here, but like, he's just something else. Um, <laughs> he is half human, half dog. Non, no cat in him. Um, plays fetch like crazy. Welcomes me when I get home, and then um, I was telling my mom about this yesterday. Uh, how he bit one of my straps um, one of my most cherished straps Mm -hmm. right he he bit through it and I didn't know until I found it the watch on the floor and I picked it up and I see I'll just show you guys do you do you see Um, (laughs) Um, so it's the one I've been wearing and then he bit through it and then Mm -hmm. I was like Luca like at that moment my tiger mom kind of side Mm. came out and I was telling my mom this I was like mom do you remember I used to tell you that I would never become someone like you because she used to be very hard on me and then her her mom my grandma was very hard on her and then she used to tell me you just you just wait until you have a kid and then you will see how likely you will become of me so then I was telling her, I was like, <laughs> Luca bit my, my strap today. And a side of me that I didn't know was there came out where I was like, <laughs> Luca, like, who did this? Who did this? And he was so scared. And then he like crawled into a little ball in my, in my lap. And I was like, I don't want to just, just go away. Just go away. And then towards the end, I felt so bad. Um, but yeah, he, so, okay. So when I first got him, I searched like, do cats, um, what is that in English? Mm. Like do cats, no, no, um, wrong. no wrong. Feel, feel bad. No, like remember, uh, um, like remember that you were 
bad to them or like yeah. do they oh, take yeah, revenge yeah, yeah. or do hold they hold a grudge the, the, yeah, yeah hold a grudge, grudge. yeah, yeah. And yeah. all the answers that I saw online were like, yeah, be nice to your cat because they <laughs> take grudges. Yeah. But this guy doesn't. Like, whatever I do, like, sometimes I, you know, um, I'm not too nice to him. He, he doesn't. He still licks me and everything. So he's special. Okay. So, yeah, to answer the question, 2020, Luca. Done. Great Cute. answer. Yeah, I like that Great one. Great answer, yeah. Alex? Cute. Um it's quite simple now everything to do with my business i think it's just been an incredible journey i know it sounds crazy but um it's just been quite good to me uh watch memory um sadly i can't say we've had many because i think as soon as like the covid struck we didn't really have any sort of gatherings or explorations mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so it's been quite dry sadly with that side yeah mm. well for me i don't know if your memory works but i see little perfect snapshots photographs in my mind of certain times, like in the past. Rain like, Man, photographic memory, Rain Man. I don't have a photo- photographic memory, <laughs> um, but trust me, you need a fucking good one when you do study medicine. Um, <laughs> now you do. Uh, yeah, I remember um, sitting in the hotel lobby talking about the podcast, right? Mm. I remember... Four seasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember... The dinner we had, like the sushi dinner, mm-hmm. that's really strong in my mind. Mm-hmm. Like just that whole f- that. It's also like you know, it's not just a, not just a snapshot in your mind. It's the feeling of that night that I, I always mm-hmm. remember, right? Um, so those are like really strong watch memories for me. And then overall, I don't know. I like when I've just asked myself that question just now. It, it would have been like hiking with long long actually that came in my mind right that was really bad because like yeah. there's sometimes where we went reached to the top and you're like fuck yeah we, we did it <laughs> I, please, i'll be honest right there yeah. wasn't a lot there, yeah. there wasn't always like a lot of conversation yeah you were just during yeah. the, the yeah. walks right you're in the zone yeah you're in the zone um but then i guess you're feeling the same way right as each other yeah and then you yeah. get it and then there was one particular one i think it was the twin peaks right that we did yeah yeah, yeah that, that one and then you know when you're walking down the view is just like you, you, it's almost like you could be in italy right with that yeah that yeah yeah and um i remember that that i got the, the snapshot i have is you in your burger backpack right yes because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i can see it yeah and then oh, um, i just remember that that view and there weren't a lot of people that day so mm-hmm. that was a that's a guy that yeah, just just talking about it, that's like awesome like I'd love to do it with you guys yeah just like yeah. Going like so so yeah that's probably probably it and you long finish this I off think it's the same it's um you get these like snapshots and you remember um and and I and it sounds really strange it's like I feel like whenever you leave a group of friends and you come home, right? You Mm. either feel very energized, stimulated, Mm. or you feel very drained. And I think um, that time when you were in Hong Kong, like we'll hang out and everything. And then when I come home and I close the door, like you get into the house and the door closes and you have this moment where you kind of feel like, like it sounds so cheesy, but you're like, this is what life is about. Like, this is what it feels like. It feels so good. You feel like your heart is full. You don't feel like you're missing anything in life. And you just feel like a lot of love and support. And you kind of feel like you don't need anything else. Mm. So you kind of Mm. feel like all the problems that you see, you're like, okay, I can do this. Not a big deal. And Mm. um, yeah, it's just such a good feeling. Mm. There there was a period of time in like COVID where it did feel like a dream right because it's, it's yeah. just not going to happen again right or i hope it doesn't happen again in terms of that, this thing happening in the world but at the same time i kind of knew it was going to end but it's kind of yeah. you enjoy the moment i would say yeah yeah and i and i remember there was one night that i had a really shit night like i had dinner with this person that i was just like this sounds like oh, a yeah. movie it's insane yeah, yeah. and then I, and then me and dan are talking on the phone and i was like dude your night's even crazier it's even worse than mine <laughs> And then we were just talking and it was super late. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, yeah. Moments like that. So anyway, there is a quick fire 
It's a short one. Um, it's a little bit different because it's a little bit more personalized and, and individualized. So, right, starts off with you, Alex. You ready? Right. Kind of, yeah. Can you repeat what I say and then finish the line? I am Bond. Come <laughs> <laughs> on. F you, Daniel. Go on. <laughs> I am on. F you, Daniel. No. That's next. 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 All right. Okay. Surprisingly, the next Let's question go. is also to Alex, right? Which is the oh, best Bond on. girl you've ever had? Oh. <laughs> go on. <laughs> All right, next. All right, he's had enough. He's had enough. Guys, if you guys can see his just, face. This right is getting now. really yeah. bullshit, man. Can you? No, no, no. Next. Anyway, like if, you, if, if the viewers can watch this, there's right, vengeance okay. happening. Okay, number three, Alex, right? What's the biggest sartorial mistake? If there's another one about James Bond, I'm just going to end the. End. <laughs> no, no. I think it's a valid question that I think is it's related to James Bond, but I think, you know, what's the biggest sartorial mistake James Bond makes? That you would correct as soon as possible if you were the costume designer. Mm, that's a good question. Um, sort out the fit. Okay, can you can you elaborate, please, because everybody will think. So what is he talking about? Okay, he looks so, great. Yeah, yeah. So no, no. Okay, when people think he looks great, I mean, granted, there are certain people that makes the suits for him, but I think it's like the superhero suit, where it's a little bit too tight, so it has to be a bit more um, flowy basically there's too much creases. i think uh, not everybody's going to know what you mean by superhero suit so when it's too tight to the body basically so when he means superhero yeah it's not like, <laughs> like iron man or something oh. it's like you know the old style no, no, superman no, no, no. i mean chris like chris yeah. chris, Reeves, chris Reeves, where it's literally like lycra or something where it's close fitting mm. like yoga pants yeah um a lot of men seem to think it's really cool especially you know if they're built to show off mm. all the muscles in their legs and mm. uh, their chest and their arms. And so it's so, so well, it's so close fitting, it's ridiculous. Like you can't probably move in it. And it or it's made out of some stretch fabric. So mm. Alex's point is that it it's he gets it that needs to be fitted with a bit well. Of James yeah, you, Bond. yeah. Don't don't think, get it too tight to your body. And I think uh, one of the giveaways things is the creases of the jacket, right? And how it falls uh, and on the legs yep. and stuff. It's, there's too many creases, right? You, for you. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, yep. now... It doesn't drape that well. Jacqueline, what is your favorite part of the leaf? Oh. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> um, my favorite part, like, like f physical, like, struck part of the leaf yeah, or what? Yeah. yeah, which part of the leaf? Is it the veins? <laughs> the green oh, it's it the, the colors, stalls? man. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Going on then. What is your favorite leaf color and why? Orange. <laughs> um, a, between when it was just about to turn orange, so it's still kind of yellow, um, yeah. but it's you can see a little bit of the right. red already. Uh, yeah. I actually thought it was going to be a different color because I thought it was going to be more of the color of your uh, your your room or a certain watch you're looking to get soon. Oh, you mean green? I mean, yeah. uh, green is my favorite color. Uh, cool. Yeah, but green is just, we have it, you know, two seasons out of, you know, the, the four or whatever, but you only get orange and yellow for that one. So you got to cherish it. <clears throat> right. Okay. And then we've got two for you. How many pieces of sushi do you think you can put away? <laughs> At one seating. Yeah, How many? 32, 32, 32 in one seating. 32. Yeah. yeah. That's quite a lot. I, like, because I, tr I tried this with someone. Yeah. <laughs> like roll or sushi? Sushi. All right, next time, Daniel, we've got to do 33. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Let's, let's break right. the record. Okay. All right. And then similar to related to food. How many burgers can you eat in one sitting? And to standardize this answer, let's keep it to McDonald's Shake Shack. cheeseburgers. McDonald's cheeseburgers. Because not everybody's probably eaten Shake Shack uh, or have access to Shake Shack. Not double, single. Yeah. Single. Realistically, three. Without That's the fries, still, right? Still quite yeah, without the fries. Without the fries. Yeah, yeah, without three. Fries. I'm sure you guys can do three. I can do Come three, on. but I don't think three is a yeah. lot. 
Yeah, three is not a lot. How can you put 32 sushi away and just three burgers? Okay, fine. I can no, but do no, four, burgers are a bit maybe. more fattening, though. But <laughs> ah. burgers no, are a bit more fattening. It. Okay, no, but it's like, I can't imagine it. Like pizza, <laughs> I can definitely do one pizza. Yeah. So it's like, I have one to try and test. One pizza is not even hard. Like, yeah, one pizza is not hard. Uh, Alex, like, actually, yeah. me and Alex can really eat, man. Like really yeah uh, actually alex you can really eat yeah right yeah like, when you're That's saying one pizza, i can eat yeah. yeah one pizza is like it's just nothing like i don't one care what pizza, size it's nothing, nothing what size of slices are we talking about like, really, like, talking right. about? Exactly. like 12 inches yeah 12, 12 inch i'm thinking 12 inch, inch. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. inch. but um yeah. recently in singapore i did a bowl of um you know laksa like laksa mm. is like yeah. that noodle mm. with all the, the sides like Ota, which is this long, um, I don't know how to explain what it is, some kind of fish cake, eggs, everything, had that bowl, and then had five cinnamon buns in <laughs> one seating. And then I had to meet someone for a coffee, and I couldn't keep my eyes open. So I quickly drank a lot of black coffee first, and then met that person for coffee. But even during coffee, I was falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad that feeling of being full man that's crazy yeah, was, did yeah. the person oh, know did the person like yeah because notice? when i was done yeah because one i drank my coffee so fast right and yeah. then i just kept eyeing his coffee <laughs> <laughs> so, I think, so i think he knew <laughs> there, there is one thing you're not yeah. good at though is you're not good at yeah. noodles yeah anything with soup yeah. no but laksa is like yeah. soup ah <sighs> so good yeah, yeah. so good yeah. right so obviously um i didn't ask any questions for myself yeah i'll, op- I'll open it. yeah that. exactly to be fair i'll let you guys op- open i'll open the floor to you guys one question right. per person yeah otherwise everybody just thinks i'm a dick and just ripping everybody else okay <laughs> i have one okay um who have you been pestering girls okay on instagram recently <laughs> Okay, so get, uh, do I have to name yeah. names? Yeah, you have to give one, like okay. one Instagram handle. Hmm. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, well, I'll I'll give you, I'll give you. No, I'm not gonna give you that one actually. I'll give yeah. you one, right? Yeah. So, there's this uh girl called Kathy Ho Lee. Um, in Hong a, Kong. No, she's not in Hong Kong. She's actually now okay. in Taiwan. Uh-huh. And straight away. She's, she's become kind of out. like our little uh my little like uh New Shen. Not New Shen, just like pen friend on Instagram. So we've okay. never met we've never met, but then um we go into these like really deep bingeful conversations really really deep That's nice. yeah really really deep and um so this relationship is kind of formed but it's it's interesting because it doesn't it's not like regular so it'd be like once every two weeks or once every month or once something like that right but then yeah. it's funny because like we'll message right and it's one of those things where you know some people they get really offended if you like if i can send you something and you don't reply yeah, yeah. it's like nothing like that in this relationship and then now the relationship you talk about in your Chinese New Year prediction that this could be the person that you're meeting. No, because that was before, wasn't it? That's the year of the rat. Oh, right, right, right. Already. Right, right, right. Um, right. And you know, when you just think, well, you think, fuck, man, like there's a lot of things where I click with this person. And I just hope when I meet her in person, it doesn't fuck up. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> yeah. she's actually going to be like that. And um, yeah really really a good person so that's a kind of very person. cool yeah um yeah so her all right that's your answer okay. next My, i'll be nice to you so if you can have a dinner with three people like dead yeah. or alive yeah. who would they be oh it's such an alex question come on yeah, you're too nice to of course it okay. is man of course well, it is uh right now yeah. Right. He's gonna no, say well, me. Yeah. Dead yeah. Or yeah. I'm gonna say Long. Long's long, 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 long gonna yes. be in there. Yeah. No. Okay. Yes. Okay. Bar us. No. Barring us. Of course, it's gonna okay. be obvious to include us. Yeah. But bar us. Okay. No, it doesn't include you. It was just Long Long actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. No. 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 no, 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 no I don't intend to go. Yeah. Fuck. I don't intend to go. 
<laughs> Anybody who's had dinner with Alex there, yeah, fuck, it's not a dinner. It's like having a dinner with a fucking radio next to you switched up on loud. <laughs> And you try and shut it up because like it's fucking broken and you're smacking it. Yeah. Like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. And it just keeps going and going and going. Um, Reminds you of you. But anyway, I let me think about this. Okay. Give me some time. Uh, Jacqueline. Okay. Well, I was going to go like after long and I was okay. going to say like, who are you most looking forward to meeting? Um, well, after COVID. Uh. Yeah, like if you could meet one person right now, like who would it be? And you know why I was going. Can after I just? Long? Can I just? Say, no, can I just say something? Chester's gonna be listening to this as well. <laughs> He's waiting for your answer, Daniel. Don't yeah. let him down. Uh, what well, non-business, right? So I'm taking business out of it because there's a few people I need to meet for business. Oh, yeah, right? pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Yeah, it would be long then. Yeah, straight up. Oh, I was gonna. I was so hoping you were gonna say that. What's her name? Like, uh, Lee, Kofi, Kathy, uh, Kathy, Kathy Lee. Uh, Kathy Holy. Yeah, I can't excuse. That. I definitely, then- definitely, we've spoken about like, yeah, as soon as it open, we need to to do it. But I always thought like, because she's got um, she's got a watch. She she she's got a watch that she's bought from Philips on the mm. auction that is still over there, mm. and um, so she needs to go and pick it up. Mm. so i always thought like in my mind that uh you know hopefully by that time the borders are open maybe you'd be back in asia and london would be back in hong kong and and yeah alex is always in hong kong anyway that it would be <laughs> like a massive like just gathering to see everybody mm. you know um, and chester so. obviously chester and chester got- sorry chester yeah definitely i mean i'd be staying at chester's home so yeah, so, yeah. um Alex's question who would ah oh god that's really hard mate like it's really hard in the fact that it's not that I have a lot of choice is I can't think of anybody right now like that yeah just people that to... you would love to have conversation with me learn from understand chat anything um, or you can save it for next time save it for next time if you want you put some more yeah I'll save it for it. next time because I can't I really can't think of it yeah all right then. All right. Cool. So that rounds up the Chinese New Year special. I was really worried that I was actually going to run out of material for this because, trust me, this took me ages to get put up because it was so mm-hmm. hard. So I'm happy it actually lasted. Um, guys. So I'm going to wish everybody, you know, a year of fortune and prosperity as well as uh, good health for the year of the ox to all our Chinese listeners and non-Chinese listeners too. Um, and I hope it's a, a great year for you guys here as well. Solid. So we'll see Happy you on the next you one. Guys. Yeah. Happy see you later. See you. Take care. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to the Waiting List podcast. Hit the subscribe button and the next episode will come straight to your phone as soon as it's ready. Whilst I'm here, please remember to leave a nice review and follow us on Instagram at the Waiting List Podcast.